Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Crazy Dad Tool Series here at Crazy Dad's Garage. Today we're going to work on this little jewel right here. Uh, now some of you guys, younger guys, may not even recognize what this is, but this is an old drill. Uh, and we, today we've got cordless drills and they look completely different from this. And uh, We used to use corded drills all the time, but even before my time, they had these kind of drills, and uh, they used them for several hundred years, I think. But uh, I don't really know how old this one is. Um, I would guess it was probably made in the 40s or 50s, 1940s or 50s, something like that. And it's still functional. It works good, but uh, as you can see, it needs a thorough cleaning and refinishing here. And I think it'll be a great one for us to do on our series. So. We're going to start disassembling it here and uh, see how far we go. So interestingly enough, this uh, the chuck part of it uh, just unscrews off of the threaded part of the shaft right there. And uh, it's already been loosened up, so it comes off fairly easily. This takes a little bit of effort and turning here. Not quite sure why it's got that many threads on it, but it's got a lot, as you can see there. Uh, but there we go. Have it off. I don't think I'm going to take it any farther apart than that. I'll probably just clean that up good on the wire brush, and the wire wheel. Let's see if we can get these two screws out and see what happens with them. Got. Uh, the one is a Phillips screw. Oops. Different screw better than I thought. I like these, by the way, because it's got both types of screws on it. Let's see if we can take the center one with. Uh huh. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Area a little bit better here. Let's try adjusting it and see if that helps. Yeah, that'd be a little bit better. Alright, let's take that one off. I think this is just what holds the handle to the crank mechanism there. Another very short one. that to come out of there. Again, most of it's just really dirty. We'll clean it up. I'd like to figure out how to tighten up this rivet here because my handle's really floppy right now. I don't know if we'll be able to do that. I think by hammering on this a little bit we'll be able to tighten that up, but we'll see. That over there. Now what do we got? Oh, it does work. Okay. This is the big gear really cruddy down inside of there but looks like it's in great shape let's see well I think that'll probably allow that to unscrew let's see Sure, it's in. No, it was just pressed on there, so we'll probably clean that up and put some glue in it before we put it back on. And I don't know. Looking at this, I think rather than trying to take that apart. I'm probably just going to clean that inside real good with some carburetor cleaner or something like that and then re-lubricate re it after I've painted it. I think those are all pretty good shape. It's just cruddy in there. And then, I don't know, that handle's on there pretty good so we'll just uh, 
sand it up and refinish it right where it is. So that's probably as far apart as we'll actually take this one. Now if it was all rusted up and I wanted to go to the effort, then I might figure out how to get it farther apart. But mostly I just want to clean it and uh, repair it. So there we go. We've got it all apart. And I'm going to take some parts and pieces over to the wire wheel and clean them up and see what we come back here with. So I'll show you that after I get a couple of these pieces cleaned up. I think this is going to turn out to be a really neat little project. Alright, so it looks like we've done pretty well here. Got everything cleaned up and uh, wire wheeled off and um, took the inside of this and scraped all the hard and grease and crud out of it and cleaned it with some lacquer thinner and things like that. Uh, we're going to I use the wire wheel to clean off the bulk of the embedded crud on this wooden handle. Now I'm going to sand it and the other handles to get them back to a smooth finish. We got those. Here's the chuck part. It cleaned up quite nicely. So we'll be ready to go with it. And two more wooden handles. Again, some sanding and things to do. Um, this one's clean to rust and everything off of it. Found the name uh, Dunlop. Dunlap, right there, pressed into it. So that was probably the make of the thing. The gear wheel um, cleaned up really nicely. It was really covered with crud in here and cleaned it up. Um, all of this area in here had red paint on it and at first I was going to try to preserve it but as I was cleaning it up it just it wasn't working out right and so I finally just wire wheeled it clean. Got all the caked in crud off of that and so that's kind of left us with where we're at right now and my next step I think is going to be to sand up these wooden parts and get them cleaned up and ready to put a finish on them. So we'll do that and then we'll be back to you. So that's ready to go now. None of our my efforts here are made into making these things perfect because of the nature of them being antique tools. I just want them to look cool when I'm done. So I've got them smoothed up. I'm not sure what kind of finish I'm going to put on them yet. The red, I think these were originally probably painted red of some kind or stained red or something. But it's pretty deeply embedded in there and doesn't want to come out and so I'm not going to spend the time to sand that completely out of there. Uh, but I've got them smoothed up. And they're not really super smooth. They still have the patina in them. There's lots of uh, uh, chunks missing and, and, and divots in them and things like that. Um, but it's, it's all part of the character of an antique tool. So the next process here is going to be paint. And I'm going to get out the paints and start putting this together and I'll show you um, at least completely painted or partially painted. I'm not sure. It depends on how it all works out. But I'll show you that in the next go around here. Hey, paint's on and drying. That's going to take a couple of days before we get it all dry. So we're just going to let it sit here for a while and then we'll um, come back and do the assembly process of putting it back together. Plus I still have to do the handles. That one more little part over here. Drying on its own special custom drying rack. But uh, we'll put those back together and uh, get back to you then as soon as they're dry and we can start reassembling them. Here we go now. We've got uh, paint dried on stuff and uh, ready to start going back together. So we'll move forward on that process. It's looking pretty nice. Uh, the only thing I've got left to paint really is the handles and I'm going to go ahead and put the thing back together before we do that. So we'll just start that process here and uh, 
Let's see, we'll put this back on. You know what? Yeah, that'll work. Put that back on, put this screw back in. back in there. It's funny how simple these machines like this can be and yet be so effective in their purpose. You know, this doesn't take anything to take the thing apart. And yet, uh, back before everybody had electricity at their homes, this was the most effective way they had to drill a hole. And I've seen these things and you know, different sizes. I've even even seen a completely different design of them. Um, that uh, all accomplish the same thing for drilling a hole in something. So this one obviously would have been a uh, you know for small holes and things like that. Probably up to I would say this is designed to drill up to about three eighths of an inch, something like that. And I did find. So the jaws and the chuck there were kind of stuck in position after I took it apart. And so I took it and pounded it on something like that and knocked them back down in. And I realized, because I was looking for how do you adjust or tighten the chuck down on a drill bit with this thing. And I realized that what happens, that's what the point is here. So as you screw it onto this thing, this screw ends up shoving it up. Um against the back side of those jaws and as you see here we're going to start to let's see is that the right no that's the wrong way we're going to start to shoving those jaws back out of here when they come in contact with the let's see if I can get this in my hands where I can do it correctly there you see the jaws are starting to come out there and we'll clamp down then on whatever um, drill bit that we've got in by turning extra pressure on it like that you're able to clamp the drill bit in place and there are actually there are two little holes in the back side of the chuck here I think I can get those where you can see them but I think there was probably a spanner with two pins in it that would hold that in place to allow you to tighten it extra tight um, against the bit it or against the drill itself and so anyway that's pretty much how far we can put the thing together right now I'm I'm gonna have to put this handle back on there but I'm gonna glue it and put some epoxy in there so that it will stay and I want to do a little bit of scraping of this paint loose right down at the base of it and I'll probably paint this handle before I actually put it on there permanently but Anyway, there you go. That's the basic reassembly of the thing. Now I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do for paint or stain or oil or whatever on these handles. And we'll show you what we came to on that when we get back. So I found some red paint that I like and that's actually similar to the color that was originally on there. But, uh, let's get you steady here. You can see better here. Yeah those two handles painted and we're going to let them dry and then we can flip it over and do that last one there but uh, this is going to come out looking really cool I think Got, uh, all that on there anyway I'm going to let that dry that will probably actually take a couple of days to get that dry enough where I can really handle it because it's enamel but we'll do that and get back get that other one painted and show you our end result here with the next uh, set of video probably. Check out the end results guys. This thing's turned out really nice. So that's what she looks like. Um, still got a little bit of paint drying. Had to touch up that rivet right there in the end of the handle. And uh, <clears throat> a little bit back around here on the back handle. But uh, that really turned out to be a cool looking little machine. And uh, I love it because it's really simple and yet it uh, 
it works and it works really good I'm not gonna <clears throat> take a drill bit and drill a hole for you but it's totally functional and working out great I just want to wrap up by giving you the end shot of it here so you can see how it all came together but I like the color combination it actually probably is similar to the way that it uh, came from the factory but it just makes a really nice cleaned up antique tool there and uh, so now I get to take it and uh, put it in with the rest of my collection of the tools that we've restored here and uh, I just think that's a lot of fun that they're turning out to be such a cool little collection I don't know I may have to build me a special little toolbox here to put the things in or some kind of display for them because I really love this kind of stuff anyway I'm wrapping up here signing off I thought you guys would enjoy seeing that as we've uh, finished the project so there you go thanks for watching another episode of the crazy dad's garage tool series